Hey everybody, Xbox DIY here. I first of all wanted to say thank you for the continued support. I know the videos have been few and far between over the last year, but it's so encouraging to log into my YouTube channel every day and see all the comments, likes, and subscribes. And most importantly, all the people helping each other out in the comment section below. I'll cut right to the chase. I've been working on a video for a long time and I'm glad to finally be able to show it to you guys. This is part three in the Xbox One controller trilogy, how to reassemble your Xbox One controller. Taking apart your Xbox One controller is pretty straightforward. The fact of the matter though is putting it back together is pretty difficult. You won't see very many YouTube videos out there about reassembling your Xbox One controller, so I've tried to do it in the quickest and easiest manner possible. Take a look at the video, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment in the section below. And as always, if there's any way I can improve my videos or my channel, feel free to drop me a line. All right, what you're gonna to need to get started is a Torx bit screwdriver with replaceable bits, preferably. You're gonna need a soldering iron. The lower the power, the better. A gator clip arm with magnifying glass will help you with soldering. You need a front and a back, two circuit boards, the joysticks, the triggers, the bumpers, as well as the rumble motors for both the triggers and the bottom of the controller, both the side panels, battery pack cover, the home button cover, the D-pad with its housing, the button cover, the mainframe, and finally the buttons and screws that come along with the controller. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is start putting the buttons into the mainframe of the controller. Make sure that they're facing the right way so you don't have to go back and fix the buttons after you've already put everything on. After you put the buttons in, put the button cover on top of the buttons and you're going to tell if it's working or not because it'll lay nice and flat there won't be any bumps after that you're going to place the first circuit board back onto the controller and you're going to go ahead and take the six screws from that and use your torque screwdriver to screw them back in you'll just want to make sure that they are snug that they're laying flat on top of the controller again if you don't do this right it's a pain in the butt to have to go back and redo this the next thing you're going to be doing is putting the second circuit board on. As you can see, there's two pin connectors here on the second circuit board that are going to match up with the two connectors on the first circuit board. So you're just going to put it over top and push it back in. So just make sure that those are aligned. And then what's going to happen is once you put it in, um, you're going to go ahead and feel a snap. And that's when you know that the controller has been put together properly. Just go ahead and double check to make sure that all the circuit boards are flush with the other parts of the controller. After that, what you're going to do is you're going to secure the second circuit board to the first circuit board with two screws. So make sure you're marking these screws appropriately when you take them out so you know how to put them back in. As you can see, the screws are going to be on the bottom left and the bottom right hand portion of the controller next to the rumble motor housing. So just go ahead and put those in and make sure that you tighten them up with your Torx screwdriver. So once you have that completed, the next portion of this video is going to be really, really important. If you don't do this part, you might be in trouble when you get to the end. So basically what's going to happen is you're going to be reattaching the sync button here. And the sync button is this little tiny button that you sync your controller to the Xbox with. It's going to slide directly into the slot to the left of the Xbox home button and once you have that placed in there what you're going to do is you're going to take the home button housing with those two little pieces of orange tape don't worry about it if they're not sticky anymore <laughs> these were not at all and you're just going to go ahead and place it over the home button there make sure your sync button works properly and if you're having trouble getting it in you can actually push the home button down and slide the home button housing over top of it so next we're going to be reattaching the rumble motors to the triggers. As you can see, the triggers themselves are held on by two screws here, one at the top and one at the bottom of each trigger, and the rumble motor sits in that plastic piece with the trigger on top of it. So what you're going to want to do is basically take the trigger and line it up based on which side the trigger should be on so that you can place the two screws in there. If you look at the rumble motor itself, it's got two flat sides, but there actually is 
a particular way that the rumble motor has to sit in the trigger itself because that way the wire has to run alongside of the controller and down to the back and the circuit board which we're going to reconnect via soldering here in a few minutes so if you get the rumble motor to sit in the trigger correctly you can put the trigger itself on it and then what you're going to do is take the two screws that hold the trigger and the part of the trigger that is attached to the mainframe together and you're just going to go ahead and screw those in so make sure that you do it for both sides and also make sure that you're using the correct screws because you don't want to get to the end of the project and find out that you're using the wrong screws so once those screws are in and the buttons are sitting flush or the triggers are sitting flush with the part of the trigger that attaches to the mainframe and your rumble motors are sitting in there properly you will have reattached the triggers properly so basically you just want to make sure that the triggers still have movement if it's stuck or something like that you'll be able to tell because you won't be able to move your trigger and you have to be careful here uh, what we're, what we're going to do is basically take the wires that are attaching the back circuit board to the trigger and you're going to want to run those down in between the buttons and it's going to be different for each side and then you're just going to run them alongside into that little groove and reattach them or re-secure them with the yellow tape that was on your uh, controller when you took it off or disassembled it make sure you check out my video on how to disassemble it I'll make sure that's posted in the comment section below. So you don't want to do it too tight because if you pull it too tight, then the trigger won't be able to move uh, freely. And uh, basically you'll be able to tell if, if you push down on it and you feel resistance and you feel like you can't move the trigger, that's the problem that you're running into. So just double check and you will have reattached the triggers. The next thing you're going to do is put the left and right bumper back on. If you haven't checked out my video on how to fix these bumpers if they break, which they commonly do, check it out. It's on my channel and in the comment section of this video. So once you have the housing back on for the Xbox home button, it's going to be really easy. You're just going to really slide the bumper in between the controller structure and the Xbox home casing and it's going to slide and snap right in. There's two little connectors that will slide over these plastic uh, things that stick out and you're going to hear them click into place and once they do you know that the button is working properly or the bumper in this case. So simple as that. The last thing that we're going to do, and I'll admit it's probably the most difficult part of putting your controller back together, is you're going to have to reattach the two rumble motors, both the ones in the trigger and at the bottom of the controller, to the circuit board. And what I'm going to do here real quick is actually pause. And what I want to say is a little bit of a disclaimer. If you've never soldered before, if you're under the age of 18, if you don't know what you're doing, please do some research or find somebody that can help you out. Soldering can be very, very dangerous. Not only is the soldering iron itself extremely hot and can seriously burn you, but solder itself can be carcinogenic. And if you don't have the proper ventilation, you could really hurt yourself. So, now that I've scared you, let's get to soldering. What we're going to be doing is taking the two wires from each of the four rumble motors, two on the top, two on the bottom, and we're going to be reconnecting them to the circuit board. There's eight different connections. And a good way to remember it is that black is going to be your negative connection and red is going to be your positive connection. If there isn't a red wire, chances are it's the other colored wire. So in this case, it's the gray one. So you can see the little markings on the circuit board that denote the positive and negative connections. Once you feel comfortable with where the wires are going to be placed on the circuit board, the next thing we're going to do is clean the contacts to make sure that you have a good connection in between the wires and the circuit board. What you can do is use a soldering iron and a solder sucker to heat up the solder that's remaining on the board and remove it with the solder sucker. This will guarantee that you get a clean connection when you go to resolder. Next, you're going to want to tin the wire, and tinning the wire means putting a little bit of solder 
on the wire prior to connecting it to the circuit board. That way, as you can see, it's a little bit easier to connect when you go to solder. These are some really small wires and they can be very difficult to solder. You're going to go ahead and connect all eight of the connections and once you are finished, guarantee that the connections are solid by just pulling on the wire a little bit to see if they're okay. Once you've made all eight connections back to the circuit board, you're going to go ahead and put the joysticks back on the controller. It doesn't matter which joystick goes on which part because they're both the same. What you're going to notice is that there may be some interference with the wires that you've run from the top trigger back to the circuit boards. You're going to want to make sure those are out of the way so there's no interference with your joysticks. There's little pr plastic guides that will help you make sure you're putting your wires in the right place. And finally, you're going to want to go ahead and put the D-pad housing back on first and then you're going to go ahead and place the D-pad into that housing. Make sure the buttons work properly before moving on to the final step of putting the outer shell back on. All right, so we made it to the last part of the tutorial. The final thing that we're gonna wanna do is place the outer shell of the Xbox One controller back on. Make sure you have any remaining screws that you need, as well as any different Torx bits, which you probably will need uh, for placing the front and the back and sides of the controllers back on, and make sure you have your Torx bit screwdriver, as well as the front back, the battery pack, and the two sides here. So, first thing is get everything out of the way, clear your workspace, and we're actually going to put the back of the controller on first. So, what you have to be careful with here is the fact that these rumble motors will fall out, and if they fall out, what happens is I'm going to show you here, your solders will become undone. I'm actually going to get back in here and fix the controller after we put it all together, but just wanted to let you know for awareness. So the best thing to do is kind of grab the bottom here and you're going to want to rotate the controller holding on to the rumble motors and you're going to want to place it in an upright position so that way the rumble motors don't fall out. So we're going to place the back of the controller on and what you have to be careful with here is that the triggers have to have enough wiggle room um, to you know function properly and you have to make sure you also get these battery prongs uh, into the you know back of the casing here uh, and if you don't you know obviously you have to start over. So what you're going to do is go first with the battery prongs put those in as you can see here those will slide right into the side and then you're going to kind of wiggle the back on and you just want to make sure that the triggers have enough room to operate and once you do that once you get the triggers operating and you make sure that the battery prongs are on good then you'll be in good shape as you can see my rumble packs are falling out here you have to be really careful with that stuff you don't want your solders to come undone. Hold on to the rumble motors so they don't fall out and go ahead and flip your controller over All right, and then we're going to rotate it and we're going to put the front on. This one's a lot easier. Let's make sure everything's out of the way here. In this case these wires are going to stay over here and you're just going to slide this right over the top and make sure that all your stuff is flush and your buttons are all working just to double check and you're going to want to pinch it and flip it back over. And the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to do the middle screw behind the battery pack cover. Uh, that way it will keep everything together and you'll have to kind of hold on to the controller as you're putting it back together. You can go ahead and find the screw that has the little pin in it, as you can see here. You're going to drop it right back in there. And you're going to grab your Torx screwdriver and fasten that. Once you do that, you can tell the controller is starting to come back together. The next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab one of your remaining screws. Let's do the smaller ones first, which are going to go in the bottom portion of the controller. Flip out your Torx bits here. That's I absolutely love these Husky Torx bit screwdrivers. You can actually get one in the uh, description of my video. They're really cheap and they're fantastic for repairing things like this. You can also use it for a ton of other stuff. And just going to want to put this in here. And the best way to do this, I've failed many times, is just to um, kind of hold this all together and put the tip of the screwdriver in your screw and then just kind of force it up into the controller. Easy as that. I failed multiple times before this trying to get that thing back in. And you're going to want to do the same exact thing for the other one. So as you can see here, put it on the tip of the controller there, or tip of the screwdriver there, 
and you're just going to put it up into the slot. If you don't, uh, stuff like that happens and it becomes an absolute pain in the butt. You can try to drop it in like that. If you get lucky, it'll work, but nine times out of ten it doesn't. And you're just going to want to screw that in. And again, you want to make sure that it snags. If it doesn't, that means you did something wrong. So if it's not uh, staying in there, uh, you want to check to make sure it's in the right slot. So once you do those smaller screws there, we're going to finish up with the two bigger screws in the upper right hand and left hand corner. These are a lot easier. You're going to want to flip out your bit like I've done in the past. That's why I love these screwdrivers from Husky. Just go ahead and drop this in. Make sure that everything is flush again so you're not missing anything. Those are going to go right in. Really easy to screw back in. We're almost there, guys. And you're just going to do the final one over here on the left-hand side of your controller. So, all right, so we are done screwing stuff back in. Fantastic. Make sure everything is flush, as you can see here, no gaps or anything. That's the one that you want to check. The last things that we're going to do is we're going to put on the two uh, side panels and we're going to put on the battery controller that's, or the battery pack. That's easy. So, um, you're just going to want to go ahead and flip your controller over. And you can see this thing is wrecked from messing with it so much, but these are really easy. Just going to pop those back on. You want to hear some snapping as they snap back into place. Just make sure it's all snug there. And we're going to do the other one here. Really easy once you've done it a couple times. And finally, we're going to go ahead and put the battery cover back on. And there you have it. Your controller is back in working condition. So you made it this far, guys. This is the hardest thing is putting the darn thing back together. Thank you for watching. Appreciate all your likes, comments, subscribes. Check me out for more videos, Xbox DIY. Have a great holiday and a great Christmas.